Rather lads, welcome back to the Kosi Yasna podcast. My name is Kosi. We'll come back to brand in a new video. Now, Asha Postakoglu has given us some hope uh, in his press conference after the Burnley win. He has said Tottenham will have a real crack against Manchester City. They will beat Manchester City regardless of where, whether that result will help Arsenal to win the Premier League. Now, those are very fancy words and those are very luxurious words um, in the ears of an Arsenal fan. And I was very excited uh, to hear any, uh, anything like that from uh, a Tottenham Hotspur point of view because I've been watching a lot of Tottenham content recently and all Tottenham fans are saying one thing, we want to lose that game. We better lose that game. We better not beat Manchester City and we better not pick up a point against Man City. But of course, the last time we remember uh, when uh, Manchester United fans wanted to lose to Liverpool in that game, uh, it actually ended a two-all draw, which actually crushed Liverpool out of the title race and it set Man City and Arsenal on their way onto the final stage for the Premier League title race. So could it happen again? Could 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 a game where fans want to lose? Right? Could a game that fans are willing to sacrifice turn out to be the best performance of the campaign? Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. We're going to be diving into Angel Postokoglu's comments. And I think the questions that we've got to answer on this video are three. One, do Spurs have a motivation to win this game? Do they have a real reason to have a crack against Man City? Do they have a real uh, you know, uh, ambition for them to go and disappoint Manchester City's season. That is number one, because if a team has a motivation, if they have a reason to destroy your season, we have seen it with uh, clubs that are actually going down, they will fight. They will give you everything they've got. And at times, clubs like um, a Wigan back in the day, clubs like Southampton, last campaign, they disappointed title races of Arsenal. Right, so that's number one. Number two, do Spurs really have the minerals and quality and concentration and discipline to stop this Manchester City side? We have seen Manchester City score 10 goals and conceding just one in the last three games. In games where we said maybe this is where we they'll draw points. So, do Spurs have the minerals, discipline, quality, uh, players, resources to stop Man City? And the third question is, can Arsenal win? All their last games because if we don't win all our remaining two games then it doesn't make any sense it really doesn't make any sense right so Angel Postacoglu says we're gonna have a crack we will beat Man City regardless of whether that result helps Arsenal we don't care and that is his responsibility according to him as a manager 400 likes for Angel Postacoglu and his comments because he is sticking up you know sticking up for Arsenal and, yeah, he's willing to do the hard work for us. If they really put in the hard work, yeah, maybe. You never know. So, in his own words, um, you know, Anja said, I'm here, I'm here fighting to the nail every single day for everything I can get uh, for this football club because that is my responsibility. Uh, I would not give up on any cause, even the most lost cause, um, because then... I would be abstaining from my responsibilities. I want us to finish uh, the season strong. I want to, uh, I want us to try and win three games of football and see whether uh, where that actually will take us. Angel Postecoglou there, his comments on your screen confirming that they want to win the last three games, which is Burnley. Uh, they've already beaten Burnley. Man City coming up in midweek on Tuesday. And of course, that last fixture against Sheffield United. Where do we start? Let's start off with Angel Postecoglou. Now, I, I know fans want uh, uh, my, uh, Tottenham to lose. I know expressions oozing wants, uh, you know, Tottenham to lose. I know all Tottenham fans want uh, Tottenham to lose. But I think the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and the Tottenham Hotspur establishment, I mean, I'm, I, don't, I can't believe I'm saying this, is um, a professional footballing entity with ambitions. I don't think Spurs have come into the season with an ambition of stopping Arsenal. I don't think that's their ambition. I think their ambition is qualifying for the Champions League. And I think the, the game tomorrow, Aston Villa against Liverpool, that is going to be a massive decider of what comes out of Tuesday's fixture. If Aston Villa win, there will be zero chance for Tottenham to go and uh, you know qualify for the Champions League. So therefore, they don't have a reason to give their all against Man City. right? But 
for me, I don't think Tottenham's ambition and Tottenham's you know plan of the year every single year is to finish above Arsenal or is to stop Arsenal from winning the title. I don't think so. I think uh, Danny Levy, as uh, as as an owner, makes more money if the club moves to the to the UEFA Champions League. I think they'll be able to attract better players if the club qualifies for the Champions League, right? So, so any fans out there that are telling you we want to lose, we want to lose, uh, that is not how things work. I, I remember I was watching um, the Manchester United Liverpool game two two second leg, and all Manchester United fans wanted to lose that game and when they scored the first goal they were absolutely buzzing they jumped up in the air and you know uh, they gave me bicycle kicks but when bruno fernandez equalized and when kobe mainu uh, you know gave Manchester united a narrow lead two goals to one the Manchester united fans were absolutely absolutely cold so it, it shows you that the team is not coming to stop Arsenal. They're actually coming to help themselves. Spurs have got to help themselves, right? They've got to go out there and they've got to um, <coughs> uh, they've got to fight for the UEFA Champions League. So I think that is the first thing that's going to happen in this game. Now, what is the motivation? The motivation is Champions League. Honestly, I've just talked about it. The motivation is Champions League. If Spurs can actually look at this Aston Villa side, fail to beat Liverpool. Villa have two games uh, games to go. Spurs have two games to go. There is a four-point difference between those clubs. And Spurs know they have got to be perfect. There is no way uh, Spurs um, you know, can fail to pick up points. If they fail to pick up points, then uh, top four is, you know, is over. So they are looking at this Liverpool side and they're like, if Liverpool are looking to send off their manager in Jurgen Klopp, then um, this is our opportunity, right? Liverpool turn up, Liverpool show up, and we have seen this Aston Villa side crumble against uh, Olympiacos, home and away. So we have seen them crumble against a team that is actually uh, not good enough, or you would say is not at the level and standard of Aston Villa. So if Villa lose to Liverpool, there will be um, th there will be four points between these two clubs. But what is interesting is that um, you know Villa will have what played will have played one more game right so if spurs beat city if spurs beat city or if they get a point against man city that puts them within range and of course villa have a very difficult game against crystal palace who are in form so there is still motivation there is still a reason for Tottenham to go out there and do something do it for arsenal if you cannot do it for the champions league do it for arsenal if you cannot do it for arsenal do it for yourselves to qualify for the Champions League. The motive is there, right? The ambition is there. And like the manager says, that is my responsibility. I am not going to abstain from my responsibilities just because I want to stop this Arsenal side from lifting the Premier League. So, motivation done. Let us assess their capabilities. Let us assess their ability. And let us assess their chances of stopping Man City. Now, what are the last four fixtures that uh, last five fixtures that Tottenham have played in the Premier League, and how have they done? They have beaten Burnley f uh, two goals to one. Uh, I think it was um, uh, was it Pedro Porro getting a very beautiful goal, and also your boy, uh, your boy uh, uh, um, uh, Mickey Van der Ven. So only defenders scoring in that game, which is uh, something that is absolutely scary. If your defenders are in those positions, uh, you know, and their scoring goes, it means that against a team like Man City, you're leaving yourself exposed, and I'll talk about it later. But the good thing is that they picked up a result. And that result will come back, uh, we'll talk about later, because it's a very important result for Arsenal. I imagine Tottenham beating Burnley is a very important result for Arsenal. I'm going to explain why. Now, before that 1-0 two two one win, Tottenham Motspa had lost four games in a row. They had lost 2-0 to Chelsea, 3-2 to, to Arsenal, four goals to two to uh, Liverpool, and four goals to nil to Newcastle. We are talking about um, 13 goals conceded in four games. That is ridiculous. Like, when you think about it, these guys have scored four goals in their last four games, in, in those four games, and they have conceded 13. When you go against a Man City that is beating clubs in gear two, gear three, gear four, and gear number five, and you're conceding 13 goals 
in um in in four games and you're scoring four goals that doesn't really look good but hey listen to me and listen to me well let's look at the games that they have lost newcastle are actually a very different team from man city in the way they set up arsenal i i would say that arsenal set up in a way that um you know favored themselves over Spurs, I don't think Spurs, um, you know, are, are good at breaking down low blocks. I think Spurs are, are good at, you know, running into space and trying to, uh, you know, exploit spaces left by by, by teams, and that is what Mikel Arteta didn't want to do, and we didn't do that. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool were just better. That is my scare. The only scaring uh, performance. Is the Liverpool performance because you think Tottenham and Chelsea they are at the same level? So Angel Postecoglou would have wanted to come and give it a go, come and uh, uh, you know fight, fight back against Chelsea. He didn't want to disrespect and um, you know show that he's not good enough as a, as a team. But the scary result is the Liverpool one because outrightly Liverpool were better than Spurs. Outrightly Liverpool did everything better that Tottenham, than Tottenham. They ran faster than them. They ran harder than them. They tackled better than them. They won the first ball. They won the second ball. They won the area dwells. They won the ground dwells. They did everything much better. And if Liverpool can do something better than you, so can Man City. So in terms of quality, <coughs> when you compare Man City to the teams that Ma Tottenham have been losing to, Man City are still better. So that gives Man City an upper hand and an upper, uh, an upper advantage that they actually win this game. <coughs> Sorry about that. So City have an advantage in terms of when you look at the quality of opponents that Tottenham have been losing to. The other thing you've got to look at is what Manchester City have been going up against in their last five games. So in their last five games, Man City have beaten... Uh, convincingly, uh, you know, Wolves, four goals to one. They have convincingly beaten Fulham, four goals to nil. They have convincingly uh, beaten your boys, Nottingham Forest, uh, two goals to nil. And they have also beaten Brighton, I think it was four goals, and Aston Villa, four goals. So in their last five games, Man City have scored a total of 19 to 20 goals. Five games. 19 to 20 goals and during that period of time they have considered one or two goals like yeah it, it really doesn't fill you with a lot of confidence but let us look at the defensive structures of the teams they have played as compared to the defensive um personnel at tottenham now in terms of defending spurs are spursy they are really spursy they are not going to come and they're going to give you a defensive masterclass. but what i expect from spurs in this game is they have a Mickey van der Ven and a Christian Romero. Uh, and they have two centre-backs that are clearly better than any of the fools at, uh, at Fulham, any of the bastards at um, Nottingham Forest, and any of the, uh, you know, uh, and, and any of the players uh, at Brighton at centre-back. I still think that Spurs are they, and this is really sad. This is sad because Spurs are defensively the most organised team Man, uh, 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 Man City are going to play in their last six games. Can you believe it? Like, Spurs are one of the worst teams, like, uh, defensively. Yesterday, Brun Larsen literally ran the, the full length of the whole pitch just to score against them. Full length of the pitch to score against Spurs. And they are defensively the organized team as compared to Forest, as compared to Fulham, as compared to Brighton, as compared to Wolves, as compared to all these other, uh, you know, bushy sides. So I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm doing on this video. I'm not sure what I'm doing on this video, right? But I'm trying to hype myself up because yesterday it was, I was down. I was really down. So Spurs are a more quality side than the last four, or the la than the last four fixtures City have played in. I, I, I think I, I would have a debate about them being better than Man City, uh, than, than Aston Villa, right? So more quality. They have uh, they, they're playing. Um, they have played some quality sides. They have been on a losing run, and they might want to bounce back. But this is where it gets interesting. In terms of general quality, in terms of a structure, in terms of 
cohesiveness, in terms of um, you know, playing as the same, in terms of that order, Spurs are the worst side among the last five Man City have played. So if you look at Spurs and you compare them to Nottingham Forest, I think you can say that Forest have a, sh uh, have a structure and clearly what they want to do. When you look at uh, Wolves, <laughs> Wolves like this season, they've been fantastic. They already have a structure under, you know, O'Neill. You look at uh, Fulham, again, fantastic, brilliant, under Marco Silva. You look at Brighton, we know what they want to do. Yes, they've been affected by injuries and they've not had the best season, but you know they have a structure and they have a, modern, uh, they, they have a mode of play and, uh, you know, a culture. When you look at Aston Villa, they have a culture, how they play, how they want to play, and a good manager. It is only Spurs that don't know what they're doing among the opponents that Man City are actually going to be taking on. Question number three is going to be answered. Can Arsenal win all their last uh, games? That question is going to be answered today at 18.30, 6.30 p.m., East African and Standard Time. If you can get to watch that game, go and watch it because that is the title decider, the real title decider. But in my general conclusion, general conclusion, I like the way Ange Postecoglou puts it, we'll have a crack. Right? We'll have a crack. Um, we are here fighting tooth and nail every single day. I like the way he puts it. Does that make his side favorites no does that make uh, uh, does that give him a 50 50 against city no city have not scored a single goal at the tottenham new uh, tottenham Hotspur stadium that is changing this week overall i still see city winning this game i still see city beating them i still see city uh beating them and of course i'll have a preview for you on Tuesday, I'll have a preview for you and have a match reaction for you as well. Don't worry. Um, I got you covered. I'll speak to you right in the next one. I beat my tongue. I've taken a long, uh, like many shots to shoot this video because it hurts when I talk. But um, thank God we're through it. And probably by the time we get to do the match reaction on, um, uh, on, on, on the match tennis game, I'm a little bit much better.